Hello and welcome back to a game of Dota 2. You're watching Starlight, our star series. We are still in season 7, we are still on day 25. And we have got ourselves game 6 of 6 on our hands. Navi on the dire side, Rox on the radiant side, and with me are two people. One of them is Nahaz, our statsman. You'll see him inside the chat on Shiver Gaming as a Nahaz a Necro. Answering uh, some questions on the trivia, and of course you will see him inside the game client as well, putting out all the stats and some trivias here as well. And I have with me a co-caster. 1437, welcome back. It's good to be back. Indeed it is, indeed it is. So Navi up against Rox. Uh, on paper, the favorite would be Navi, but Rox's case is actually performing really well lately, has got some great synergy, great coordination, and I think they're going to be really happy with being able to pick up a Nature's Prophet as well, having some more global control and denying it to Navi at the same time. Maybe they can cause themselves uh, an upset here, and of course, Rox, in theory, actually still has a chance to go to Kiev if they don't lose any more games from this point onward and if they make some other teams lose in the process including Na'Vi. In terms of bans, not really anything surprising thus far. IO bad, Naga Siren OD banned out, Lifestealer picked up first, Visage, Nature's Prophet for Rox and the Darkseer then for Na'Vi. What do you make of this thus far? Um, Na'Vi picked up Nakes again. We saw yesterday how they picked up Nakes in the first phase uh, and uh, this is a hero that's actually in the modern day of Dota, it's a hero that people like to counter really hard. And uh, Rock's Kiss also picked a hero that uh, other people have learned how to counter as well, and that's the Nature's Prophet. So maybe now in the second phase, as they after they ban out, they might pick these heroes that are some kind of counters to this. I would like to see Navi picking uh, either Puck or Storm Spirit or even Queen of Pain to combo up with the Life Stealer, and it's also a hero who's capable of catching out nature's profit when he's trying to split push and um, all that kind of stuff. But other than that, the picks are pretty standard with the Visage and uh, the Darkseer. Those are pretty standard first pick material heroes. Yeah, I like the Storm Ban out from uh, from Rocks, of course, making sure that the nature's profit counter is not going to be there anymore. Uh, no. Oh, oh, sorry. Just a moment. I got to open and enable mic. Oh, sorry. yes. Enable your microphone. Make sure you're audible inside the game, client. People, two minutes from now, let us know if... Uh... Hello? Okay, fine. It, it's, it's good now. Okay, cool. The green bar is moving. Yes, it is moving. Awesome. So if you don't hear him right now, you might have to toggle to Russian casters and then back to make sure it does work. Uh, we have got ourselves a troll and, an, uh, and a Seraphine band out. Interesting bands, not really pickups that Rox often goes for. Uh, Rox is the one that went for the Elder Titan in the game earlier today and they were able to win with that. Of course they did have a Naga Siren there to set up for uh, for some awesome uh, team fights. But uh, Rox in terms of mid lane heroes, they normally go for the high aggression one. BZZ likes to play the Queen of Pain, the Puck and those heroes and those are still in the pool. Navi, I think they're going to be wanting to pick up the Puck if they have the chance to do that. Um, if Rox doesn't pick up the puck straight away, that is. But we'll see what they end up going for. Of course, Navi, yesterday, we saw them going for Invoker. Oh, did they? Yep. Did, did Navi go for Invoker? I, I didn't see that game, actually. Interesting. Then but um, I don't I don't necessarily see them uh, going for Invoker here. Like, Navi and all, mostly all professional teams like to do the Nakes combo with a hero who can just jump in and they can just instantly burst one hero, so... We will, I, I, it's more, I, I will put my money on a Puck in this game. For Rox or, or for Na'Vi? Na for Na'Vi. For Na'Vi. Okay, well Rox, uh, they're uh, letting their time tick through here. They could still pick it up themselves. We'll see. Of course, Na'Vi, they, they do need kind of one of those uh, blinky heroes for the Lifestealer. Having themselves a, a Lifestealer bomb is of course always uh, nice, especially if you want to try and gank up on a Nature's Prophet who's thinking he's split pushing by himself. So we'll see if that's gonna be uh, picked up here or if Rock's gonna deny it. They're actually taking quite a long time here. They still need a hero to uh, combine up with their Visage as well, and knowing that Navi actually hasn't got a single support hero just yet, they might actually want to support, want to secure themselves one that works well together with the Visage before Navi can pick it up, or something, for example, like a Rubik. If they're afraid that uh, the Navi otherwise would pick it up, I mean, so many options that you don't want to give away to Navi, and you could only ban out two, and now you have to decide which one you're going to deny to them right now, and they're actually using up almost all of their bonus time here. Yeah, I think um, they want to really be careful with their next pickup. 
it's gonna be crucial because having um having go having to go first for Navi it's uh, really big because they can just keep on countering every pick that Rock's Kiss goes for right now. So, and they go for the Alchemist, which is quite interesting because Life Stealer is known to be the counter for Alchemist, and um, but they still opt to go for that Alchemist, even though Navi. W probably wasn't going to pick it either. Yeah, interesting choice to find here from Rox. I mean, it's a, it's a strong carry, don't get me wrong, and it's also strong up against the Life Stealer. But it's um, well, it's a, it's an interesting choice. It took so long to think about this one, and I kind of can't figure out why they would think so long. Maybe they just want to keep things uh, secret for now. Uh, Rubik will therefore be picked up by Navi and leaving the uh, Queen of Pain and uh, Puck still in the pool. I mean, they can pick up either of the two anyways after the next pick from Rox. Uh, uh -huh. Rubik secured for Navi. I think they're gonna be. I think they're gonna be pretty happy with this. And on top of that, Navi did not use any of their bonus time and gonna force Rocks to make a split, like a very fast decision because they don't have the time anymore to use it. Yeah, and uh, now that I look back on it too, with the Shadow Fiend and Odiban. Oh, that's a Templar. Huh? Okay, that's a pretty decent pickup. But then. Navi still have Darkseer, which is actually a hard counter to uh, TA. And it's gonna be interesting. Yeah, I guess they wanted to preemptively uh, bat or, you know, counter the puck, but right now I think indeed Navi, no intention to pick up the puck anymore, I would say. BZ still a pretty decent puck player, though. If he gets himself a good early game, he might be able to make something happen, picking off uh, heroes left and right and getting himself some control over the game. On top of that, they have got a pretty nice minus armor lineup with the Alchemist Acid Spray and with the melt damage coming up from the TA, so that could result into an early Roche and perhaps some early towers being pressured down as well with the fighting potential that they present. It might be worth it, might be nice. It really depends. I think a lot of it depends on the uh, combination that the Visage will make with the last support to be picked up by Rocks. I mean, you kind of need to be having a support combination that can and push and gank and keep your carry safe, and Navi, they have that in the Enchanters and the Rubik already. They can and gank, and push, and keep the carry safe. What more do you want from supports? No no Crystal Maiden for for a long time for Navi. They've picked the Crystal Maiden so often lately, but going for Enchanters here for Poppy, of course, is pretty strong as well. Uh, yeah, they didn't want Rock's kids to actually ban out this Enchantress, because Enchantress is actually a pretty good hero to gank uh, TA with. Her, the hero plus the creep is capable of just no, taking off all the refracts and uh, basically getting a kill up mid lane. So I would like to see. Oh, uh, there goes the cop ban as well. Cop would have been the easier hero to play against the uh, TA, but Navi can still go with the puck here. Ten seconds remaining. Do you really think they would pick up a puck into a Templar assassin? Five Five it's not as bad as you think. Like early game. Puck is going to be able to do just fine by uh, harassing, just auto-attacking the TA, breaking off the refracts and just lasting. And uh, when it comes to the mid phase of the mid lane, like around 3-4 minutes, the Enchantress can just come with, with Rubik for a gank on TA and as soon as they get one kill, everything is just absolutely fine from there. And they're going to have really good team fight too. And uh, Navi is okay with just playing with a Nake's carry as well. I mean, I don't see too many other options for the mid lane for Navi to really pick up for Dendi. They, they can go Viper as well, actually. Viper is another hero who can do really well against TA. Obviously, it doesn't combo well with Nakes or something, but still. They can do a Darkseer Nakes bomb, I suppose. Uh, last time they went for uh, for Viper was actually last Sunday. And they went for Viper up against Quantic. And uh, there was uh, Dendi that died, he gave first blood, and he just keep, kept on Ooh, dying. He uh, lost the game, actually. And the Doom picks That's up That's actually a jungle of Doom. Offlane Doom? Uh, I think it's just a jungle Doom. Uh, Furion will probably be offlane over the Doom bringer. Most likely, I think. Well, we'll see. We have seen a lot of offlane Dooms lately. I think with Enchantress in the pool, though, as you might be right, I mean... I'm actually thinking perhaps they want to go for a dual jungle. I have Nature's Prophet in the jungle as well because I'm not quite sure how long he can stay on top without seconds, any uh, danger of uh, Enchantress coming out to uh, to harass him uh, away. Five uh, it's off. quite questionable going this Doombringer. Now they have four heroes who need a lot of farm. Doom, TA, Alchemist, Prophet. All these heroes need items to be effective. And Navi is okay with just ha getting the next to some items. 
Darkseer will build his mech and then they can just group up, fight us five, and Rock's Kiss still won't have all their core items that they need before they can fight and I think it's going to be really rough with their lineup right now. They have a pretty, uh, pretty okay, quite a lot of pressure on the TA at least. I mean, yeah, Alchemist needs some time, Doom needs time, Nature Prophet needs time to get big. Visit actually needs level 6, so the Templar Assassin, that mid lane, is going to be oh so important. Navi, one hero to counter them all, which is it going to be? Is it still going to be a puck for the TA, or are they going to be going for a different option here to make sure that the TA has a bad time? And if TA has a bad time, as you said, I think Navi's death ball will come uh, fairly soon down upon Rock's Kiss. Lone Druid is the pickup in the last one. Well, that oh, has oh. been a long time. That means that Darkseer will be up against the Templar Assassin. I mean, we've seen that before. And we've seen that, I mean, at the, like when Templar Assassin oh, yeah. just came out, I guess. And it's work. It's work. It works a bit, but it's uh, still interesting to go for that in the end. Oh. Darkseer does amazing against the uh, TA mid. I just didn't uh, think that Dendi would actually play Darkseer. But yeah, it, it's just, I guess, I suppose it's just obvious that you just put the Darkseer mid against the TA. I mean, any team I think would do that. I, I, I was just thinking differently because it's Navi and I've never actually seen Dendi play. Never mind. Oh, they, they swapped. They swapped. Okay. They swapped. I have to say, I've never seen Dendi play Lone Druid either, though. Not mid, anyways. Uh, I've seen him play Lone Druid before. On Pops or in Professionals? In, in Professional. I think I've seen him play it once or twice, but I've never seen him play Darks yet. Huh. Maybe we can get our stats man. Yeah, I would like to see that because because I mean, Danny Lone Druid. The question is, will he be mid or will Phonics still be mid on his Dark Seer? Because I think that might still be an option. Just put Dandy on a safe lane or something like that. Go for a semi-aggressive trial with Kuroki and Puppy. I think that's a very strong chance. Dandy has only one previous competitive game played on Lone Druid and win. Well, so he did. He did have one. Game. One. Yes, <laughs> one. All right. So um, yeah, but it's quite interesting that they this bear they will go for like a semi push lineup let's see how quickly that they will start pushing because i think that matters a lot. oh they swapped again oh come on so confusing <laughs> well how many games has dendy played on the dark seer that would be the question then well let's see who's playing what then for real we're starting on rocks because who knows maybe uh oh instant smoke up for rocks uh, maybe uh, they're gonna swap again while we're, no, while we're not looking, but smoke up for rocks here as they move towards the mid lane. Of course, for people that are only watching uh, the game, as in not the draft in the VOD, let me just recap it for you, because you're still watching Star Letter Star Series. This is game 6 of 6 today, and we have got... Uh, smoke up right now. Yeah, they're gonna go to, into the, the jungle of Navi, countering that enchantress. And we're gonna have rocks taken on Navi. Nah, I don't think they can find first blood just yet. Perhaps they can find Rubik though, but... They're gonna go for a ward. No smoke pop just yet. Rubik's still fairly safe, and I think that's gonna be okay. Perhaps the well, smoke wears out. They can still wait for someone here. But we're gonna have BCC taking on the Templar Assassin, as we already have got Doom moving back. Nexus playing that role, and they wanna try to go for a Vos. So Vos might be cut out. There's no Sprout up. He's gonna try to uh, run. Up the high ground he goes. Alchemist actually ending up stunning himself. Alchemist played by Yul. This is a support Alchemist. For Rock's Kiss, we have got Android taken on the Visage. And this means that we're going to see a Farming Doom on the bottom lane. Android on the Visage already said that, yep. And um, that means that we're going to have Cedo on the Nature's Prophet on the Suicide lane. We'll probably rotate it into the jungle, but it's uh, it's a support alchemy. It's been a while since we've seen that. I'll leave a Navi to be introduced by you. Okay, so we got Puppy on Enchantress. Havos playing the Nyx. Um, Kuro playing the, his signature Rubik. Funic playing Lone Druid, and Dendi playing his 1 and 3 Darkseer. 1 and 3. And for Navi, a team who wins major like a lot of their games, 1 and 3 is a pretty big deal, I would say. Yeah, I, I would definitely agree. We'll see if he is a bit... Uh... Oh. <laughs> we'll see if he's a bit, uh, a bit better here in this game than he has been previously. So far, harassment is already done. I mean, a BZZ is a refraction already ticked off. He has still got two left, for, though, before he has his bottle. And actually, he will have his bottle very soon because he only got one tangle in which he got pulled at the start. So I think he will be fine. Lone Druid will be on the off lane. will be up against Nexus, who seemingly is by himself right now. The supports are stacking and pulling with the two of them just to try and get as much levels as they can because they know that Navi's death ball will start rolling at some point. And 
they have to be ready for that. They have to get their levels up in time. Same thing goes for Sido. Sido who just tries to delay the farm from Navi on the top lane. I'm not quite sure how far delayed he can get it though, but he is uh, making good effort with now getting uh, the creep wave following his trans. Yeah, um, it's quite interesting that they put this uh, Doom in the safe lane carry with the uh, Alchemist jungling. I didn't really think that was their plan, but I guess it can work. I mean, maybe when they saw that Navi was actually just sending a bear into the off lane, it was better just to make the Alchemist a carry instead. So that he can just free farm with Grievous Greed and Doom can also jungle. But they just opt to have the Doom um, farming the lane and I feel like they're missing out on a lot by doing that, to be honest. Yeah, it's a nice uh, block by the bear just now, just making sure there's not going to be a creep camp spawning. At least not the two minute one. Uh, apparently you have minus 100. You were on a seven game competitive win streak, how about that? Jesus. That's <laughs> are you. Irrelevant, guys. <laughs> well, you have, like, people have to know how, uh, you know, how trustworthy you are when you say stuff. Oh, okay. Alright. Because, I mean, me they, help? me they don't trust, obviously. I mean, my record on my last competitive games is quite low, <laughs> considering I haven't ever done that. So, you know, to take facts and from someone the thing else. And the thing about not having this, like, Doom jungle and uh, having these two supports bottom. I think they're minimi like Rock's case is minimizing the amount of experience that they can get, which isn't very good. And then they can actually push in the mid lane that there's a battle on mid right now. Then he's uh, not getting the favorable Ooh, trades here. This pills almost goes to the courier. Nice yeah, I don't think it actually hits. No, it, it didn't. The spill went through, but the damage didn't rather. Like the, you okay, saw the yeah. you saw the side blade, but you didn't see the damage being taken by the courier. Uh huh. Uh huh. Well, you can tell that Dendi isn't very experienced playing this lane. He's got 8 CS compared to the TA's free farm, basically, on the mid lane. What Dendi should be doing is pushing in the lane and then going into the medium camp, the level 1 camp, and just killing that camp while the TA is farming under the tower. And this is how he can maximize the amount of uh, gold he can get. But he's having... And uh, right, actually, right now, it's a bit too late to... He hasn't done that from earlier, and this would also give him a little bit more experience, get him to level 5 quicker and whatnot. And look at this TA, he's just absolutely free farming this lane, where, in my opinion, he should be losing. Yeah, this is a pretty scary thing for Navi to be up against, I think, because, as said earlier on, I mean, a lot of pressure comes on this Templar Assassin, and if this TA is having a decent lane... There's a smoke up. Yeah, There's they're, they're looking up. to come, they're looking to make TA's life uh, maybe a bit more troublesome than it was before, who is actually now farming behind the tower. And the smoke gang rotates top rather, but n yeah, Nature's Prophet Sido is already saying goodbye to that lane. He's already farming bottom. Perhaps they can at least try and make a push on the tower, but that's all they would be able to do. Did you mute yourself? No, I'm here. Oh. <laughs> Why? What happened? You were silent for a second. I thought, low. what? You know, he's oh, gone. Oh, no, no. I was just watching uh, Navi, what their plan is here, because. Right now, okay, they're gonna get this tower, and um, maybe they can actually snowball really hard off of this, and that's what exactly what they need to do right here. They need to be able to even push two towers here, depending on what this alchemist has. He's got a port, one level in poison. He's probably gonna need to port up to the tier two and uh, poison up to uh, stop this push if Navi ends up. No, nope, they're not gonna keep pushing. He's, they're gonna go back get some more and then try again. And in the meantime, Nexus manages to finish off a 5 minute Midas. It's not incredibly fast, and his last hits are still on par with that, those of uh, of a Vost on his Lifestealer, who is of course still... I mean, he was he was pushing the lane, and in theory, sometimes you get a little bit less last hits than, uh, than if you're not pushing. But um, maybe Nexus can get himself uh, on track here with his hand of Midas to be ready in time before Navi maybe starts pushing lanes out. Uh, we have got uh, Nexus, I mean, his team tried to push a bit on the tier 1 tower. Oh, wait a second, we might have a first blood. There is a, no, oh, another shield comes out. Maybe they try to go for Dendi, in comes a trap, in comes Yule. Charging up a stun, goes for it, finds it as well. Oh. In comes Mel Damage, Dendi tries to surge himself away. Can he do that oh. in time? One more hit away from dying, bottle charging up. Runs away, and I think he might be living. In comes Welcome. another trap. BCC not done with him just yet. Face boots are there as well. One more melt attack will be there, but there will be another surge for Dendi as well. And he gets away. He lives. No first blood spilled just yet. And the top lane push continues for Navi while that was going on as well. Yeah, 
had there been a trap on the uh, Dandy's hill from as soon as uh, as soon as the TA hit six, he probably would have got him. Oh, oh. Yeah, they go on top lane. Yeah. Puppy for first blood. Yep, yeah, puppy for first blood. Oh my oh, God, man. level two. In untouchable. That's the most annoying spell that you can think of. One more mount hit might just do the job him. though, and that's gonna be it. First blood spilled. No points in nature's attendance, and that means no heal for puppy. And uh, one hit was all that's it took. A pretty big deal. First blood to a TA. Oh man. But yeah, that was quite the surprising untouchable for the <laughs> haste soon. There was nothing he can do about that. I think they came to a surprise and to VCZ as well. It's like, what? He spec that one. But yeah, as soon as he realized no nature to 10 as well, that's going to be an easy kill then. Right. Actually, that's a pretty good build considering it's a TA, Doom, and Furion. That's, uh, it's all physical damage. So it's interesting that Puppy went this build. But I really feel that uh, Navi is still in the danger zone at the moment, depending on how well this Nyx and Darkseer are going to be able to uh, keep Navi in the game with their fights and stuff. Because Rock's Kiss, they're, they're cruising their way right now. They're farming what they need to farm, and uh, at this rate, they're going to be able to hit their core items when Navi start to really push or fight. Yeah, and actually, Yon's already charging in a stun, tries to maybe go for uh, for Funic here, who's level 5. He should be able to throw oh, it that's, out. That's big. They're going to be going for him right now. They have a Doom up as well. They go for it. TP incoming from Dendi, though. Funic still taking a lot of harassment. Cedoy coming in from the back, takes the kill. Down also goes the Alchemist, but that's a worthy trade. If they get Cedoy, though, route. that's not going to be good. And that is no TP out, no boots. Yeah, he's dead. He is so he is gone. In comes Puppy. He's gonna try to help out, but Dendi with the last hit puts him back on the map. Oh man. Two for one. They got a lot of TPs in, but still. It's all, it was all on that route. If he didn't uh, get rooted, maybe even Furion would have lived and just the Alchemist alone would have died, but... They got the root off. That's Dota. That's how it works. Templar Assassin. Oh, here comes uh, Gank on mid. Yeah, might be in some trouble. There's still a refraction up. Dendi taking a melt hit in the face. Has to be backing off again as BCC is actually looking to go for this. And oh. the Nature's Wrath comes in from Cedo. That's not something that Dendi saw coming. He goes down. Puppy now on the way out. He has his Nature's Attendance. Will get healed up. And Kuroki coming in with the Telekinesis dropping BCC back to where he belongs. Helps stop that. Uh, the Tier 2 Tower, of course, still dropped. And that's Hephaestus' money. Hephaestus also got a Hanamitis. But with the Doom having his Devourer at level 4, he is of course farming faster. And on top of that, now also with Cedoy with his hand of Midas, two Midases versus one. Rocks will uh, continue to get their farm on for uh, for a little while longer. And I think they're pretty happy with the way that this game is going, even though their bottom gank just um, didn't turn out the way and, they planned it to. And they lost two towers on top lane. Yeah. Yeah. That has got to be said so as well. It's gonna, so it's going to come down to the snakes. Um, it's gonna come down to Havost and see what he's capable of doing uh, with all this free farm that he's got on top and two towers. Let's see what kind of ganks he's able to he's gonna be able to pull off. But yeah, and you can see how this high level TA now, even the Darkseer, even though he's going on him and uh, T Darkseer is a counter to TA because it breaks off all the refracts, TA is capable of doing so much burst damage because of the amount of levels that uh, he's got now on Navi. Yeah, four heroes of Navi gathering middle. They look to be uh, making something happen here. Look to be taking the TA down. Telekinesis is already there. In comes the it's open wound, the dust, the TA is indeed gone. In comes Alchemist. Yeah, um, was... Not quite sure why you're here. You'll run. Forest run. He's actually able to run. Nice refraction steal by uh, Kuroki, who got surged off to maybe try and make something happen. Nice. They just wrath. Vos taking a lot of damage for that, and he doesn't have a Hanamitis or whatever. I mean, um. Uh, Armlet just yet, also something like that. Uh, level 1 nature's attendance is ha Is he gonna die? Ooh. No. Oh, so close. Still takes the damage, 28 20. HP. Cedar might just decide to TP and they go for Kuroki, Soul Assumption. Hits on the refraction. Well, that's gonna be tough for you, Android. They will deny the tower, though. We should deny the tower, unless this siege group gets lucky. No, nope. deny it is. By the way, this ward... Didn't... Like, shouldn't BCZ have seen that Navi was hanging around there? Uh, Were they smoked? No, they weren't he, smoked, right? I, it, no, 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 it's nighttime vision. He doesn't have vision all the way up there. Like, he doesn't have a ward on mid hill. That's he does! A oh, it's over to the dire! What am I saying? Wow. Yeah, that's a ward. My bad. <laughs> My bad. Yeah, it was kind of like a. It was kind of greedy going in, I suppose. Like, he could have went into the jungle and just farmed while Navi was missing, but he went for the creep and that was just a free gank for them. But uh, what I was gonna say was if the alchemist held that stun for like a fraction of a second, 
he that Nakes would have died. Yeah. <laughs> that Nakes would have died. But that really sucks that they didn't get that kill even and they lost the mid tower. And that's exactly what Navi needed to do. They needed to group up and uh, take out that mid tower. And that is what the Nakes was there for on mid lane. Yeah, he gets himself a bunch of extra gold in the end. Able to uh, get an assist on the kill. And he has got now drums almost about ready in about 50 gold from now. And at the same time, I mean, they force a lot of people to go middle, and that leaves Funic to free farm on his lone druid on the bottom lane, who now has oh, yeah. 1700 gold. So that makes a big difference for him. Roxkis just kind of getting a bit disrupted in their play, in their farm. And of course, with the tier 1 mid tower down, and of course the tier 1 and tier 2 down on the top lane, their farming range greatly diminished. And I would even say that the Asians, Asian spot right now on the side of rocks could be farmed by Navi as well if they feel that to do so, feel the need to do so. Yeah, Funic is definitely getting a lot out of this, especially since um, earlier on when Roxas was trying to push him bottom, they gave him a bit too much experience and creeps without actually killing him. And now he's just catching up so nicely with all those towers dead. Yeah, Nexus in the meantime, I mean, right now, what would you expect Roxas to do? Because, I mean, they are supposedly getting ahead in this early game, but with all these towers going down, well, that's not going to happen. Navi is still 4k ahead in gold, 2k in experience as well, because they took the later kills. Is it all on the back of TA to tr to create space again for and the Nature's Prophet and the Doom to farm? Uh, I'm, to be honest, I really don't know what Rock's Kiss' plan is, but right now they're just content with farming up, and uh, oh. looks, on, looks like throws that on mid lane. He was way, yeah. way out of position there. I'm, that, I would that, go out of my way and say, that would be something that I would do. Boom. Flames. Uh, no. <laughs> no. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe he has some other ideas. Oh, he maybe distracted them from Roche. Maybe, maybe it's that. He just distracted them from Roche. <laughs> <laughs> Who knows, right? But, um, yeah. Times. But Rock's Kiss, they just seem content with just farming. I mean, it doesn't really seem like they have some kind of game plan right now. They bought Midas's, so that it basically is what they should be doing. Just wait till these Midas's actually pay off. And uh, Navi is just playing the objective game right now. They're pushing towers, they're taking Roshan, they want to bring the fight to Rock's Kiss and um, make them boxed in and punish them for buying these Midas's. Well, Nexus has to still use this, there we go. I mean, they're still trying to take down these towers, and especially this bottom tower, which is now in the Nye range. So there's uh, do it or die. No deny coming out, though. Doom takes the tower, he runs away, but in comes Dandy. Puts down the wall. Oh, no nice vac. stun. No vacuum, y'all. Lifesaver right there. Runs forward, vacuum back in still for you all. If he dies, it's a worthy sacrifice. Slow up on Dandy. Oh, Android, he came back for that slow. Gets telekinesis, gets brought down. Double kill for puppies, enchantress. And that means that two kills extra go the way of Navi. Could have been worse if the Dune oh, Diamond had died as well, but I think it could be only the Alchemist that died in the end. If, if That is true. Fizz is just the Visage did not need to die there. He could have just backed off, allowed the Fearon to split push like he did now, and uh, slowed. And Navi still, still hasn't taken this tier 1 tower here. But yeah, they should be just trading towers right now. And uh, Rock's Kiss, they just didn't need that Visage to die. Apart from that, everything was perfect from what they did. Yeah, they will lose their tier 1 tower in the end of that's of course their last tier 1 tower. Means that their jungle is also kind of now a Navi's territory, but at the same time they take control of theirs. Because Cedar pushing down that tier 1 tower really makes a big difference and instantly he places a ward. Like a flag saying this one is mine. Funic tries to run for it, gets doomed up, gets stunned up now as well. Is it enough? Uh, it should be enough. Yeah, that's gonna be enough. Soul Sumption comes in, might be a deny though if the puppy gets his way. Yeah, it gets a deny! Okay, I was never worried, puppy. MVP. Rox might be able to take a tower, but in comes a Vos. Pops the drums, looking for the Visage. Oh, Visage on the wrong side, but he will be able to TP out. They don't have anything against that. Unless Karoki was faster, but he wasn't. Nice deny. Important deny. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I just see that attack flying out from Puppy, and I'm like, oh my god, he did it again. <laughs> There's some standard Puppy place. Perfect timing. And wow, he's... He's found three wolf creeps running around with him. He well, only has one anymore, like right now. He well, he had two and then he killed one, so... You know, I spent games playing Doombringer not being able to find one single wolf creep for like 15 minutes and Poppy just gets like three of them. Well, at least Nexus doesn't have to worry about that anymore. He has to got a wolf creep for his own, so he's, he's gonna be happy with that one. 
Maybe that's the reason why... Oh, actually, you know, you could eat creeps from Enchantress, though. Perhaps that's the reason why Doom is able to uh, to have that. Maybe. Maybe. This, uh, yeah, this puppy, but, uh, by the way, I mean, he just leaves Kuroki to buy all the supporty items, and Puppy just goes straight for an Aghanims after Treads. I think it's an okay choice. Like, Aghanims and Enchantress deal so much damage, and it's going to deal so much damage to Alchemist, Doom, because they're both melee heroes who are going to be in the front lines, and Ench is just going to be able to just, you know, poke at them. Yeah, and uh, it was, Ooh, sorry. What I found interesting was that TA didn't get Blink. He actually opted for the uh, straight BKB, and he actually has it now. It's quite the farmed TA. Yeah, it's a bit more defensive item than what I was expecting from him. But perhaps he realizes that this game is going to be going on late. They do have some nice turtle potential in the way of uh, Acid Spray. And they just profit, of course, with the split push. Oh, Nexus uh, out too far, gets ganked upon, and will end up going down. Vacuum back, Telekinese back, and open wounded. Yeah, and that makes just ate him alive. And as you can see, both of these guys actually have like the same net worth. The Nyx and the um, Doom. And you can just see the difference in their abilities and how much damage they're capable of dishing out. Doom is all about that Doom, and if he doesn't cast it, then he's just as strong as any other yes. mediocre hero. Cedar with the Shadow Blade looks to find uh, maybe something still. Get some vision up. Dendi? Go Ooh, Dendi comes in, gets a vacuum, yo, already charging up a stun, that's a turn around and cast it if he wants to! Nope! Goes down first, BCC turned on his BKB, but a lot of physical damage coming out from a foe, so I don't think he cares. If only he's he gets a nice, he's because... crowded up. Yeah, that should be a couple of kills away from dying with the fade bolt oh, coming man. out from Kuro after the BKB ends. <laughs> Kill secured. See what kind of gank that was. That was a Rubik stole teleportation. Oh, oh. they're going on top again. It seems. Net teleportation up on Android, dropping him back into the hands of Dendi. Goes for it. In comes the slow. I mean, they're getting chased away from their base right now. Surge up for yeah. Dendi, looking for it. Fate Bolt comes out already. We still have a vacuum if Dendi gets tired of chasing, but I don't think he has to worry about that. He I'm just waits until... Uh, up. Mid lane right now. Mid lane right now. Let get doomed up. Ooh. The Doom still up indeed, y'all. Already sitting inside the Sprout with him. That's gonna be the Doom up. A Vos still has some target to eat up, but it doesn't matter. That's a kill. In the end, it's actually... Uh, I mean, they, they lose their, their Visage. The, but that's okay. They got themselves a Life Seeder in return. The chase from Navi not really being fruitful in the end. Of course, they still yeah. lost their TA, but I think we can separate those yeah. two instances right now. They Navi seemed a bit split up there. They had uh, two different objectives, and um, it really played out poorly for them with the Nyx dying. But what happened on mid, their gank was when Denny was going in. Rubik stole teleportation, had him had the Nyx infest inside him, and they teleported onto the mid lane. So that was a quite interesting bomb that they made over there. Oh, puppy. Yeah, charging up the stun. There he comes. Inside the Essence Prey, Soul Assumption. Nature's Intent is not enough. Who cares about Untouchable if you only need one melt hit to I finish the job? They should take mid tower here. They should only indeed, even guys. though Denny is hanging around there. Nope. He's got himself the Blink Dagger. There is also a Relic up on Funic, although he doesn't have enough gold yet to finish up his Radiance. Okay, actually, this Smoke Gank, it was good that they killed off Puppy, but in reality, they didn't get much out of it. It's only, they only got this. Support. Yeah, they only got the... Uh, oh, what? Bottom? Oh, again, with the teleportation. It was a teleportation gank again. Oh! With an infested life sooner and banning. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there was nobody here, anywhere there. And then suddenly a Furion dies and we can only think that it was a teleportation bomb from the Nyx. Oh, then I... That was a misplay by Hevos. He stopped attacking the tower. Oh, another TP in. Yeah, goes Dendi. for Yol. That's gonna be one extra pickup this time for Dendi. Oh man, that this tele that teleportation that uh, Kuro stole paid off so Radiant's much. I think that's the most I've ever seen it pay off in a game. It's just something that as Rock's case you don't really expect it. On top of that, if you're not Nature's Prophet and you see when it comes a pause, and you see uh, trees coming in, you don't you don't see. A, still see, like, you don't think that it's gonna be Rubik, you think it's gonna be your teammate. Yeah, <laughs> maybe. Exactly. Well, in comes a pause, uh, we do. We did indeed have the tower denied. Havos not able to get the last hit, but he did get a familiar. 
So that's uh, that's nice for that. As uh, we uh, we see, I mean, Rock's case, they still have to try in the latest game as much as possible, but so far they've been doing an okay job. They still have three towers to take down on Navi's outer towers, while Navi only has to take one outer tower left. Uh, outer tower left on Rock's case. BCZ's BKB is nice. It does say that he wants to go for a later game. Assault Karas is ready, almost up on the Doom. So that will help out. Yeah. Well, that, that definitely is going to help out, but, you know, the guy that we haven't spoken about at all is Funnick. Yeah. And he's just about to finish up his Radiance in 100 gold. And this is where I'm expecting Navi to start moving together and try to... Oh, oops. I think <laughs> so you just I... threw off your microphone or something. Something like that. <laughs> but um, this is where I expect... Um, Navi to group up and take out the last tier 2 tower on mid lane and probably after that they're gonna wait up wait for the Roshan to spawn take that and then move again for the base towers yeah, Roshan well, gonna be up again in about uh, three minutes yeah don't even have to wait that long even though we have to wait two minutes for a Vos apparently who has got himself a Bastion now so uh, sitting on 700 gold Armlet ready, Basher ready. He's uh, looking pretty happy with himself. Puppy only needs about 700 gold before he has got himself his Aghanims and will be starting to uh, deal out even more damage. I guess in terms of new items, that's about it. 1500 gold up on the Rubik. I'm expecting Kuroki to want to have a Bleak Dagger at some point because, of course, I mean, yeah, that's what Kuroki does. He buys Bleak Daggers. And then he can TP and blink and can be anywhere on the map and can be uh, as big of a playmaker as he wants to be, which he's uh, normally a uh, pretty big one as, actually. Oh yeah, Kuro, Kuro is an amazing playmaker. I really enjoy watching him play. Well, you're gonna have the chance as the pa if the pause ever ends. It's uh, 7 to 11. I have to say, I'd put it in favor of Navi right now, especially since it's mostly been, as you said, it's mostly been 4 on 5, because Lone Druid has been in outside of fights. I mean, he's been involved in 3 kills, but that's because everybody came to his lane. Not because yeah, he moved anywhere else. that's when he else. was getting dove. That's when he was getting dove, and he just, you know, casts his root and gets a kill for his allies and dies. Yep, I mean, he died twice. But uh, once, I mean, I think once his Radiance is done, Funnick is going to say, you know, I'm done farming, I'm going to join you guys, and Navi is going to start pushing, and for Rock's case, for them, is just hoping that they have enough to stop the push from happening, and I'm not sure if it's going to be enough, because right now, TA built defensive items, and of course, Melt's still a lot of damage, but defensive items, Doom, defensive items in his Assault Karas, of course, with the Vladimir's offering, that does take a lot of great armors to help out against all the physical damage coming off from Navi, but still... No damage. Who is gonna deal out the damage for Rock's Kiss? Well, I think it's just gonna have to come from uh, Firion. I, I mean, I, I don't even know how they're gonna deal damage in fights, but Firion is gonna have to play the game of his life at, with the split pushing and just force Navi to move back and just try to push out lane. But you know what I noticed? Navi, they sometimes have really short games where they just like rape a team. Mm -hmm. And some games, it just gets really dragged out. And I think in those games, it's when Navi isn't playing, like, their players aren't playing the heroes that they're comfortable with. And in this game, I don't think Funic is very comfortable playing Bear, and Dendi is definitely not comfortable <laughs> playing Darkseer. So that's why it seems like this game is actually quite close. Oh, I, really think, close. I think that Navi saw the edge of the smoke. Uh, or actually, they saw the smoke, because they have a ward there. So they saw the smoke being used by Roxkiss, who goes up to, to the uh, top lane. Wants to try and see if they can find Funnick. Funnick realizing that the smoke was meant for him, so he is running for his life right now. Face oh, boost yeah. there. He is gone. <laughs> he is out of there. And he gets the Radiance ready as well, so he that will be him he didn't, get, he didn't even get time to put his uh, recipe on the bear. <laughs> he was like, no, no, I gotta get out of here. Just running for his life right now. Well, Rock's Kiss, uh, Smoke failed, and we might get a counter gank from Navi, because they know now exactly what they would be running into. Infest is there on Dendi, who has, has of course got that blink initiation. But Rock's Kiss, their smoke has run out, and they're actually saying, you know, I'm gonna go back to farming, Nexus at least. Android, same story, as we have got BZZ and Yule on their way as well. Or at least on their way back to, uh, to where it's safe to be, which is not in the top lane, of course. See, uh, oh, Dendi with the with the bomb, yes. the bomb, the walking bomb. So I'm looking for something. I mean, he has got the ward. 
maybe he finds that he can go for BCZ. He's chasing mean... after. He's chasing after the TA. Yeah, he backs off though. I mean, he would maybe be able to force out a BKB charge. I'm not sure if he can actually kill off the hero. Well, the Nyx does have a basher. Maybe if he bashed him immediately. True. True. Right? Yeah. But uh, that smoke gank, um, Rock's Kiss was trying to pull. It was kind of like a Hail Mary smoke gank where they just didn't know what exactly they should be doing and they really need something to be done or they're just going to fall too far behind. So they try to go with that and uh, it was just too difficult. Yep. Nothing nice. to be done. Too many words for Navi on the map or Rock's Kiss to try and pull off such a smoke. Yeah, nice wording coming off from uh, Kuroki, who of course, next to uh, being able to buy fancy stuff, like indeed a blink dagger, which he now has, he's also been able to keep those wards off. Kuroki still, or sorry, uh, Puppy's still buying some wards, but he has got the priority on his uh, on his agonims. Familiars drop, left and right, both familiars drop. We have got, like like we said, I mean, the Radiance is there, and in comes the five-man push from Navi. They don't find anybody of rocks because they're actually split-pushing, two TPs coming in towards the top lane, forcing Nexus back, forcing Ciroid back, and they won't be able to find them. They TP themselves out, and the top lane is still Yo and BCZ, pressuring the tier two. And with all the TPs going bottom, I think they might be able to get it as well. Havos finally comes out after, like, a decade inside Dendi. Yeah, and dies. they're just gonna go for the Roshan now. Like I said earlier, they're gonna take the tier 2, fall back, farm a bit, wait for the Roshan, take that, and this is where they're gonna look to try and uh, interbase. And uh, Roxkiss know that Roshan's back up, and Navi probably went for that, so just, they're just trying to put as much pressure, as much split push as possible for now. Yeah, we do have Puppy coming around towards the top lane, so they have to be kind of careful, but... Uh, yeah, now with the Roshan down, they just back out, did what they could. And, and uh, this is all the core items from Navi as well. Radiance, Basher, Blink Dagger on Darkseer, Agonims on Enchantress, and it's it's go time. It's Navi's go time. I think so too. I think so too. It's just a question of which lane they want to go for first and of course push out the lanes that they don't want to go for as well to just make sure they don't have issues with uh, split pushing from Roxkis. Or if they do, they can actually be reach the base of Roxkis before Roxkis reaches their base. Cedoy with the Shadow Blade sitting on bottom lane, ready to, to push the lane out again at the moment that Avos thinks it's unsafe to continue farming, or perhaps they want to make a go at him. I mean, Doom is around there as well, but he, no, he's not going to make a go. In the meantime, top lane has got some issues. Funic actually gets his Aegis burned with Cedoy, BCZ, and Yul helping out. In comes Funic again, tries to run for it, gets some melt damage. In comes Danny Doe with a vacuum inside a wall. Cedoy and Yul will be the targets. Yul trying, charging up, a, charging up a stun, lands it, runs away as, well, Chemical Rage Pop, but he goes down. Aegis Prophet goes down as well. That's gonna be it. Aegis Bird for two kills. TP starts the bottom lane. Nexus, Nexus is getting so bashed. Open wounds. Doom comes out on Denny, but it doesn't matter. Nexus drop as well. Killing spree for Denny on his uh, Dark Seer still. And perhaps they can make a play right now. The lanes are still looking okay ish for Rock's case, but Navi could definitely turn this into, uh, into a push. Oh, yeah. They can just walk into. I, I think they can just walk into any lane and just take. Take a take a tier three tower, but Funic did end up losing his Aegis, yeah. which I really don't think Funic was the actual hero to hold on to Aegis, anyways. But that's okay. Oh. It actually paid off for Navi. BCZ might be in some trouble if there's gonna be some lucky entangles. But in comes Android. Perhaps they want to take down a bear. That would be a big pickup, actually. The slowest there. Three hundred. So assumption as well. Three hundred gold and another bear forced to be resummoned. There we go. That's gonna be another bear for Funic, and that means that he only has one bear next time they push up the high ground? Yeah. So they're gonna have to wait for that as well. But actually, it looks like they might just go top lane. Navi is moving around. Oh, oh. BZZ caught out of position with the blink initiations. He turns on his BKB. Is it enough? Can he actually run from charges. this? Bottle charges and a double damage rune if he wants to use it. But he. F well, Ooh. he's gonna wish he did. Kuroki able to get the kill, Onich being called, so five kills in a row going the way of Navi. Familiars getting picked off left and right, and there's no resummon on the Familiars for another Bottom. one and a half minute. Oh, Almost. can they actually take him oh down, or is the boss gonna open up on... Oh, Alchemist, he stunned himself, nice Sprout! Yo, get away from the trees! He will end up going down though, that's a kill of Vos, runs towards his team, but that goes cabbage. down still. In comes Dendi again, with the wall, with the vacuum, gets the two copies, but I'm not sure if he can take anybody down here, surging himself up. Uh, he can't do anything here apart from just harassment. 
Maybe force out someone to overextend towards him. In comes Kuroki though. He can definitely do something, especially with the unstable concoction that he stole. Backs off again as he realizes that they're already on the high ground and they don't have a creep wave. I think if they had a creep wave, they would go for it anyways. Blink forward. Vacuum. Nice Nexus. Vacuum. You're entangled. You're killed. Still goes for Doom on Denny, but no follow-up means no kill. Visage will go down as well. Double kill for Phonic. Navi looking pretty strong. Cedo trying to split push, split push on the top lane, but I don't think he can do it. Not in time for uh, for him to reach the base before Navi reaches theirs. Even though Navi, I mean, they still have to wait for that creep wave to come, which is taking a long time. Yeah, that was quite the cocky play actually from Pavos dying in the jungle. He he, since he went for the uh, rush abyssal blade, he didn't uh, have plate mill or any components of uh, AC, which made him less tanky, especially against Doom's AC and the poison. And now. Navi just fooling around and picking off people left and right. Rocks Kiss really feel like they can't really do much at the moment. Well, I feel like Rocks Kiss can't do a lot in the moment, to be fair. Yeah. I mean, if all Navi have to do is just wait. Wait till they're all grouped up somewhere and just push up somewhere. <laughs> and then we're gonna be able to take the base. Yeah, I think so too. If it goes any more longer, we have got Dendi picking up uh, Scythe of Ice. I think if he has that, he might be happy with his initiations. I mean, so far all he can do is blink a wall and vacuum. But you can tell he really wants to make something happen and he blinks forward. And if those two are on cooldown, he can't really do anything. So the, uh, the side of the fight will definitely make a difference for him. We have got Kuroki picking up a 4 stuff, so more mobility for him, as he has been able to make some bigger plays as well. 2200 gold upon Phonic, who is probably the one to go for the Assault Cross in this one, with the Vos picking up the uh, Abyssal Blade. Where is his bear anyway? Oh, there it is. Yeah, he goes for the uh, Silt Karas since he has already got the Hyperstone. Scythe of Vice, by the way, is up on Seedoy. But again, the, the main point for Rock's Kiss is even though if they get the controls down, the damage is not going to be enough. I mean, Templar has not picked up a Yasha, that's definitely going to help. But it's still only defensive items. Doom now picking up a BKB as next item. It's still still needing to be finding some sort of... Sort of Sort of uh, damage coming off from Rock's Kiss, but I don't really have it apart from the melt damage. And in comes Navi with their five-man push up on the top lane. Let's see how far Here it get. is. Here it is. Well, the bear. And that tower. Yeah, fortification gets used. The question is, will Rock's Kiss want to try and fight this? Yes, they will do, actually. They stop split pushing. They move back. The BKB is ready up on the Doom. They want to try and make a stand. It's do it or die for Rock's Kiss, I feel, because if they lose this fight... They'll lose the game. Navi will continue pushing. If they play even, perhaps they can force Navi away. If they spam out enough spells, perhaps they can force Navi away as well, but we'll see how it pans out. Familiar's already picked off. Funic. Easy pickings. Alchemist ends up stunning himself. Nope. In comes Danny with a vacuum nope. up on three with a wall as well. Sprout comes up, but Yul is already dead. Looking for the next target. And they try to find Cedo. Yavost opens up on him. Shadow Blade doesn't matter. Abyssal Blade, that's going to be a kill. BZZ next target picks up his BKB, but has to be running from this. Because he can't really do anything there. He doesn't have any damage. Can't do it. BCC will go down. Next is doomed up by Kuroki. Of course he steals Doom because he can do that kind of stuff. Buyback from the TA as a Vos just picks up a building because he can. Gets picked off though. Goes down to the bot, bot back. Templar Assassin. Now Puppy and Kuroki running away. Blink forward from Kuroki. Puppy still getting slowed down. Four stuff forward by Kuroki. Did he just save the life of his captain? I think he did. Telekinesis comes out. Kuroki though. Oh, that's a nice surge from him. Gets himself out. We'll be safe. Blinks himself away, TP out from Puppy. In the meantime, in the mid lane, the bear is just wreaking stuff up right now. He's already taken down the tier or one tier three tower and taken down the Rex, of course, on the top lane. Funic will be able to TP out barely though. Pun intended. But I mean I think for Navi mission accomplished. Oh, Next yeah, time it sure. will not stop at uh, one set of Rex in the tier three tower. Nope. That's like this. It's basically half their base. Yes. That Navi just took in one go. And wow, Kuro, what a player. Oh, yeah. What a player. That was just so awesome to watch. He even melded some hits, and uh, that, was, that was pretty cool. That's all I can say. Yeah, and he makes it out. I mean, he, Kuroki has only died once thus far. Of course. And he got 
he got and doomed. he got enchantress out too, so. Yes, he got, he, yeah, thanks, thanks to him, Puppy Lift, actually, Cedo might be in some trouble here. Dendi does have a gem. The hex is up, but it's only up on the bear. The TP out will be there, though, making sure that the bear can't uh, entangle him, because the vacuum, of course, was already used. Nice job by Cedo in the end. Uh, Dendi really wishes he is finished up with his uh, side of the vice right now, but he only has the Mystic Staff thus far. And, and I mean, we saw last fight, I mean, they, they've got some... They, they had the opportunity to fight, I mean, Rockskiss didn't go down that fast. They have the survivable items, but you just saw they didn't have the damage to throw back at Navi, and they just ended up dying while retreating to the base, and it just was was too much. They they need some form of damage, and they don't have it. What, like, yeah, it, you're Rox's captain, what do you do? What do I do? I, I tell them to go Hail Mary gank right now. There's nothing else that they can do here. And that's exactly what they're trying to do. They just gotta leave their base and try to pick someone off. Like, go some kind of all-in, and if it fails, then okay, you'll lose the game. If it works, okay, you can survive a few more minutes and maybe it'll work again. But uh, farming away or pushing, just pushing out lanes is not really a solution right now for Rock's Kiss. No, Navi, though, making themselves uh, invisible for the moment, smoking up. Going bottom, so that means that Rock's Kiss, their, their gank's attempt on top is not going to be really working out. It's quite interesting that they actually went top to try and find the gank, considering this is the lane where Navi would push in. That's the lane where there's still two, three towers standing, and the Rack's mid will go down if they uh, take uh, the bottom lane as well. Let's see if they're going to be back in time. There is no fortification anymore for Rock's Kiss. So they don't really have that much time to get themselves back into uh, their base, but I think they realize by now that they have to hurry. Or have to hurry with split pushing, but that's not gonna happen. It comes to TPs. And this bear is just gonna... Still needs to get there first to walk up and hit that tower. It's lagging behind a little. Yeah, actually enough, Alchemist runs up stunning himself. Oh my god, I think that's like the 10th time. Yeah, you're all sitting in the middle of the lane. Navi not taking advantage of it, they were just waiting for the familiar to get back up and perhaps a second one as well. One impetus, second one needed, they don't have the vision though. Oh well. TA with a DD rune, that's gonna be important, but she has to be careful. Because if she gets caught out by herself, there's gonna be trouble. Cedo is by the way standing on the other side of the trees. But they are no they, they know where they are where well, they know where he is. Dendi coming in with a surge, he knows it. Gets hexed up. Telekinesis is still there though, Kuroki able to follow him, follow Dendi. Alchemist still goes down the bottom lane, and now we have got life still just opening up on BCC. The bashes are there. Can they take it down? The impetus is fly. The refraction is on. The foes trying to chase it down. Kuroki not having the gem Dendi here. Dendi is the one with the gem. Dendi, Dendi is the one with the gem, and Dendi is the one that's stuck inside of Sprout. As Cedo is still alive in this, gets entangled right now. In comes Puppy again with the damage. This time on Nexus, Nature's Prophet will still go down. Nexus able to retreat himself into the base, as we still have BZ up. Up, and he's able to actually pick up the life stealer, which is a pretty big deal. But he's the only one that died on the side of Navi. Phonic in some problems. Still has a mech charge. And right now, with three heroes dead on the side of Rock's Kiss, they can try to go high ground with that bear up. There is still a secondary bear up for summons as well, so they uh, can go for that. Four seven forward. Kuroki actually getting stunned Whoa. up by Yo Kuro oh. goes down. And that's gonna be Navi being forced out of the base. They got the tier three tower. But uh, the fight uh, being split up this much, with the Vos chasing down BCZ and the rest chasing down someone else, ended up not going all too well for Navi, or at least not as well as you could think. That did it did not go bad. They got a tier three. They got a couple of kills. They even got a buyback up on the Nature's Prophet, which was nice. But they didn't get as much as they wanted to. They didn't end the game. Yeah, and Kuro, he's been saving his teammates all game, but when he really needed his teammates the most. They didn't save him. And uh, look at Rock's case going for a Roshan over here. And I'm gonna be really surprised if they're able to sneak this in. Uh, nope, the poison bear sees it. Yep. Sonic go just walking his bear and Yol already charging up his stun, looking for a target, finds it. Oh, up the high ground, still finds the target. No. I was gonna say, please stun someone. <laughs> And that uh, is gonna be still Yol. The vision is there. Blink forward from Denny actually impetus. Boom, kill steal. Kill secured. Okay. And that's gonna be Roshan for Navi, most likely familiars. No match for the uh, might of the impetus. Puppy just comes for the no scope. Smite mm -hmm. on that alchemist. Yeah, Aegis in the hands of a Vos. And this is uh 
If it wasn't already out of control for rocks, I would say that it is now. 15k in favor of Navi in terms of gold, 20k in terms of experience. But uh, the most, it comes down to just Navi having all their core items up and then some. While Rock's case is still trying to get those damage items up and even that is going to be fairly late. Templar has only just finished up her Manta style. And it's not going to be enough. Unless, if, unless Navi makes some big mistakes. Oh look, familiars. Not getting my crowd, one already dead. Oh, this is Aegis as well, I really don't see what. Oh. They try though. Doom up on the foes. BKB turned on my BCC. Yo, stun again. Oh, Alchemist. It's not enough. Oh, actually, that's an Aegis still burned. Yul still goes down. That's gonna be Poppy with a pickup. Nexus forced backward. He turns on his BKB. Still getting chased. And it's already a GG with BCC going down. That's gonna be still an entangle for Visage. Rock's kiss. They tap out. Na'Vi. Too strong. Na'Vi. Take themselves another win in Star Series. Another win that they definitely needed, as already said. Even though they have got themselves a bit of a margin of error now that Quantic has got an extra loss to their name, they still want to just make sure they get themselves in the top four for Kiev and Navi. On the right path, Rock's Kiss now down to five losses in Star Series. And uh, that's almost safe to say that unless Quantic is going to have some big throws and some other people are going to have some, some bigger throws, um, Rock's Kiss is not going to go to Kiev anymore. So it's only four teams that go to Kiev? Yes, only four. Oh, that's truly unfortunate. I think there are so many good teams. Like, if they had six even, it would be really, really amazing. I think so too, as especially like this season of Star Ladder. I think in the previous seasons, you were always able to say, like, these two teams are going to end up in the bottom four. And I think this season that was absolutely not the case, apart from Ubos, who of course is no longer a team now. But for example, we have Virtus Pro sitting at the bottom two. We have Poseidon sitting at the bottom four. You weren't expect I wasn't expecting that at the start, for sure. Yeah. It's really it's really, really sad that some teams some really strong teams won't be able to make it. Yep. You wanna have any uh, shout outs and plugins because before we call this a night? Um, shout out to all the fans and viewers who are watching uh, the game. It was, and uh, shout out to Shiver too. Yay. It was really fun uh, casting with you. Uh, you guys can follow me at, uh, on Twitter, 1437x, and you can, and also recently I've started streaming, so you can follow me on Twitch as well at twitch.tv slash 1437. Are you, so are you be planning cool. on uh, streaming tonight? Um, yeah, I, I guess I can stream a few games uh, after this. Can, is this the last game? This is the last game. All right, well, maybe we can play some pubs together. Maybe we can indeed. We are going to jump ourselves out of this game. So we're going to play some commercials and uh, we'll play some music to get some water before playing. I uh, need a couple of pubs. have some time for a couple of pubs before making VODs and such. such. So stick around for that and we'll be right back. And uh, otherwise, if you're not sticking around, then have yourself a great night. <laughs>